Okay, so here we are. We're looking at exam this example. And let me just run over it again real quick for clarity. We tried to figure out the number of unhealthy days for a bunch of metropolitan areas, find a 95% confidence interval. The first step is to take these numbers and put them into our calculator. How do we do that? We have to put the data into the TI-83 or 84 calculator. How do you do that? Well, here's all the steps you need. You hit the stat button, then you're on the edit menu, hit enter. Move to the top where L1 is, that's an L, L1. Press clear and enter, and that clears out L1. This is an R here, clears out L1. And then you put the data down L1, L1 hitting enter each time. And then when you're done, you hit second and quit, the mode button, which has quit above it. And then after that, you hit stat, calc, and then move over. It's an arrow there. Let me try to do a better job on that. Move over to calc and hit one variable stats and enter. Now, it might look a little different on, on different calculators, that last part. Sometimes you, you might need to hit enter twice here. You might need to hit enter twice on some of the new. So let me, let me show it. I'll show it now on my screen. Um, let me open up my emulator. Okay, so here's, here's my calculator. I'm gonna go through the button stat. I'm on edit, hit enter. I'm gonna go up to the top and um, hit, so I went up to L1, see how, I, see how I can move with the arrows? To clear out L1, I gotta go up to the top, press clear and enter. So I highlighted L1, I pressed clear and enter. And then you put the numbers right down L1, like 61, enter, 12, enter. And just keep going. Just put these numbers right down L1. Hitting enter each time. 40, 27, 38, 93, 5, 13, hopefully I didn't miss any. I feel like I might be missing one. Is there 10 of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I got them all. Okay, so I just put the whole list down L1. And now I'm gonna quit. I gotta, you gotta quit out of this uh, list mode. So you gotta hit second and the mode button because it'll really do the blue above it, the quit, right? Anytime you hit the blue button, the second button, it does the second function of the button. Every button can do at least two functions. So like the mode button, if you just hit mode straight, it'll do mode. But if you hit second and then mode, it'll do the blue above it. That's why the second button is blue, it'll do the quit. That's what I want, second and mode, which quits. It quits and now I go back into the stat mode a second time. This time I'm gonna go over to calc. I edited last time, I meaning like um, I put in the information like editing a, a Word document. You put it in, it's saved, it's got it. Now move over to calc, calculate one variable stat. That's what I want, hit enter. Now on the newer TI 84s, it'll ask you list, frequency, list, calculate. On the older ones, it won't. It'll, you just hit enter a couple of times and it goes. Um, if you have this kind, you got to put in list L1, frequency list, leave it blank, calculate, enter. Now you want the S sub X, not the little squiggle sigma thing down below. You want the 27 number. You want that one. You want the S. It stands for sample standard deviation. That's the one you want. Okay. Let me go back into my iPad screen. Okay, so um, so there's the buttons again that we pressed, and I'm going to list again. If it if you got the one that said list, then you just put in L1 frequency list. If you get that, just leave it blank. And L1 will already be on your screen almost all the time. If it's not, the way to put L1 in that first blank is you hit the second button and then the one, which notice if you look at the bottom, it has an L1 above it. You hit second and one. If it doesn't already have lit, list L1, it probably will. 99% of the cases, 
It's already got an L1, if you even have that thing at all. That's the newer kind. And leave frequency list blank, and then hit calculate or whatever it is on that. All right, are we getting these two numbers? Can I help with that? How are we doing? Are we getting those two numbers? How can I help? I'm glad to help. Is everybody figuring out how to do that on your calculator? Yes. It's absolutely essential that we can all do this on our calculator right here, right now. So I'm glad to help. You can, you know, I'm glad that you can turn on your video and you can show me your calculator. If it's not giving you those numbers, let's get it working right now. Anybody I can help that's not getting the X bar to be 33.5 and the S sub X to be that 27 point whatever number. Are we all getting that? Is there anybody needs help with that? All right, I'll move on. Feel free to hang out after class. If you have trouble with that, be glad to help. All right, so we got to get those numbers. That's step number one. Um, and also make sure that it's simple, random. Yeah, blah, blah. It's normally distributed. They said that. I'm going to move on. Number two, find the critical values from the T-chart. Okay, I'm going to find the critical values from the T-chart. So I'm going to go now to the T-chart <clears throat> and get the critical values. Um, so, oh, so yeah, they did say normally distributed right here. Normally distributed. That's why, you know, step one, it is, it is normally distributed. Normally distributed. And it is, it is, and it said random, and it is random. Those were the two conditions on step one. I'm being kind of lazy. I didn't want to bother, but yeah, there we go. It does say it. So yeah, check, check. They're both satisfied. So step number two, we get the critical T values. Critical T value. All right, so degrees of freedom, remember, is N minus one. Okay. So what is, what is in? Well, it's, it's the number of data values, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We had 10 data values in our list. Everybody see what I did there? I just counted them, right? <clears throat> 10 data values. So I just go in, okay, this is then 10 minus one. Nine. So degrees of freedom are nine. And what's our confidence level? 95%. So that means we're doing the bell curve with ninety-five. So percent in the middle. So if you, if 95% is in the middle, what is the total amount of the two outsides altogether? 5% or 2.5 on each tail? Yeah, 5% total or two and a half on each. Exactly, right? You take 95% out of the middle, that leaves 5% for, for what's left over on the two outsides, right? So then we go, we find degrees of freedom nine, um, degrees of freedom, 9.05 to the T chart. So we go to the T chart, degrees of freedom, 9. Right here, degrees of freedom, 9. And area in the two tails, 0.05. So we go right there. Area in the two tails is 0.05, degrees of freedom, 9. 2.262, that's our T. T distribution, 2.262. So T equals 2.262, right? Did I do that right? I already forgot it. 2. Point, it's not that one. 2.262, right? Okay. So we got our T value. All right, on we go with step number three now. Step number three in the notes tells us to evaluate E equals T, right here, T times S over the square root of N. So E equals T times S over the square root of N. So T, there's my 2.262. 
times s. What's my s? Well, that's that's right up here. This is my s, the s sub x. So that's going to be 27. Now, you don't need all those digits, really. Up. I guess you could type them in. It doesn't hurt. But you really don't need them all. You don't need that much accuracy. Over x um, square root of n. So that's the square root of. And what's n? n is still 10, right, right here. n is 10, the number of data values. So there we go. Hit the buttons on your calculator. Literally, what you're going to hit is 2.262 times the 27.6777. That's good enough. Divided by, and then the square root, parenthesis 10, enter. It's literally what you're going to hit. I'll do that now, too. Um, and I'm getting... Two times that 27.677 divided by second square root of 10. And I'm getting an answer. There equals 19.798. That's, and well, I'll go O. Oh, Six. That's enough accurate. Plenty. That's more than we need. And then finally, step four, the confidence interval is x x bar minus e to x bar plus e. X bar minus e to x bar plus e. So step four, confidence interval, x bar minus e to x bar plus e. The mu in the middle. So then I take my X bar number. X bar is again, we found it when we put the data into our calculator, 33.5. It's up there. 33.5, 33.5. And then we go minus E, minus the, this E number right here, the 19.79806, and plus. 19.79806 with the mu in the middle. So there we go. Hit the buttons on your calculator. And I'm getting, I don't know how much accuracy they want. 702, that's plenty. Um, And this one is 53.29806. And there we go. That's the confidence interval. Did they give any follow-up questions on that one? No, that's all they wanted. So what, what are we saying then? We're, we are, uh, what does this mean in real life? This means we, it was a 95%, confidence was it 95%? Um, I remember now. Yeah, 95% confidence interval. This means... We are 95% confident that the true average, um, whatever it is, air quality index is between, is between 13.702 and 53.29806. The word nine, so the average for all those cities, well, the true average for all cities, right? We, we took a sample of 10 cities, but which, and we found the average for those 10 cities. The average for those 10 cities is right here, X bar, that's average, right? It was 33.5. And that made us 95% confident that the true average for all the cities is somewhere between 13 and 53, basically. Right, because we just had a sample of 10 cities. Other cities could be higher or lower, but you know, we, we did, you know, based on the, the, our sample, we're 95% sure that the average for all cities is somewhere between 13.7 and 53.29. And there we go.